I'm no offensive guru, right? So, um, but I I do think it does take time, um, unless you're going into an offense that's similar to your college offense. Some some colleges have um, uh, you know pro style offenses that make the transition a little bit easier into the NFL. But still, it's the defenses and it's how fast the defenses are and how fast the defensive linemen are on them. You know, so it's it's other adjustments besides just learning the system or learning uh, the offense. You also have to learn the defenses that you're going to face. As everybody knows, we are talking to former Colts and Broncos defensive end Daryl Reed. Daryl, you, you look at the league and obviously the defensive side of the ball and guys like Micah Parsons and, and TJ Watt are the faces of the NFL and the future where the NFL is starting to move to. This past draft, there wasn't a defensive player drafted until the teens. Were you surprised with that? I was a little surprised, but it's like waves, right? So this year was the quarterback wide receiver wave. And you have, you know, some guys in, you know, like a Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, where these guys, I mean, you had wide receivers in this year's draft that, you know, arguably are the best three or four wide receivers since the class of, um, I think it was T.O. and E.D. Lamb. I mean, I remember that that class. They were they said 17 f- uh, wide receivers are going to be drafted in the first two rounds. I remember J- uh, Jerry Judy, C.D. Right. Lamb, uh, right. uh, Justin Jefferson. I mean, right. that, was, that was the class that everybody yeah, was talking they, about. They, so it's, it was one of those classes, another one of those classes. And then there was it was a quarterback heavy class, at least in the front, right? In the front, because in the middle rounds, there was no quarterbacks. You know, there was very few quarterbacks drafted for, I think, two rounds, you know? Yep. Um, so, but, but uh, I mean, and, and then there's a lot of DBs that get drafted. So it, it's just, I think it's, I think it's, it, it wasn't that many elite pass rushers in this year's draft, I don't think. No. But it, how do we know what they're going to be? You know, that's that's the crazy oh, no, thing. You, the you, listen, you know. You, yeah, but I, I mean, if trying we, to know you, at least when there's a lot in one draft class, yeah, yes, right? yes. You know, just like there's a lot of receivers, there's a lot of quarterbacks. Everybody's not going to pan out, right? And Darryl, then, let me let me ask you a question. In, yeah. in in the top ten, could you remember the last time a defensive player was not drafted in the top ten? Could you remember? Because I can't. Not drafting in the top 10? Top 10. No, no. I can't either. I, I don't remember. I have to have the stat. Somebody's over there got got to know what year was the last year. A defensive player. I, I, I could look. I mean, Speedy could look. With, a defensive, but I no, defensive lineman, right? Defensive player. Any, any kind of defensive player. There was any no, kind of defensive player. Yeah, yeah. You, you, gotta, you guys got to pull that stat. Yes. We have to definitely look at that because I don't remember. There was not one defensive player – Drafted in the top 10 in this past class. Not one. And you're right, Daryl. Usually there's at least edge rushers taken early. Like There was not one. Just think yeah. about that. No corners, no defensive well, linemen, no linebackers. Well, line, linebackers besides outside linebackers that are rushing. Right. Value position now, right? Yeah. So it's not the same as it was before. You're not going to have a middle linebacker go top 10 anymore. It just doesn't happen, right? Um so that hurts there, but usually you have a defensive lineman, whether it's a DN or 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 a three technique. Yeah, they usually, or you find a corner that you think is a, is a game changing corner. You know, they they did there was not one, and there were a couple of really good corners in this class, were, like there, really really good. That fell into the second there, round. Yeah, there were some really good corners in this class. I <laughs> yes, I agree with just that. Just think about that. It just it's crazy, and that's that's the thing. What was it? Uh, what? Yeah, last year Will Anderson, yes, and then the year before was Ian Hutchinson, yes. The, but that was uh, he was uh, this year was nope. the first one that there was no that, no edge def- rushers yeah, or defensive saying. players. That's what I'm saying. There was no defensive player drafted in the top ten. Could you tell me the last class that there wasn't a defensive player drafted in the top ten? And you mentioned the 2020 class too. Even with all the quarterbacks and all the receivers taken, like, there was still Chase Young and there was still uh, Okuda, a corner, like. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but who was the elite defensive player of this class? The the kid from 
The kid from Alabama. <laughs> said the kid from Will Anderson. We knew Chase. Lot La- 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 is also another guy that a I lot like of people lot, like. Yeah. Lot Lot two. Yeah, I like Lot two. I like Lot two a lot. I actually like Lot. Penn State, right? He went to Penn. No, no, no. Oh, UCLA. UCLA. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lot two. Yeah. He was he was the first defensive player taken. Yeah. Uh. Yes. Yes. By the Colts. Yes, he was. Yeah. 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 I like Lot two. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's that. When was the last year? You guys got the stat yet? Can't Pass you? Rusher. AI just like pull that up in one second now. I, I mean, don't know. I, I, Google I, AI. Uh, <laughs> Google, Google AI. We have two guys. We got a. We have an executive producer, and we have a guy that does the sports. Yeah, they they're have, they're looking. Google they're AI. looking. They're looking. I know you're. You're probably like, like come on, give me the damn so, number. No, no, I'm, I'm I'm focused on the Jets. So what are the Jets going to do? Oh. What, what, did you guys set the over and under for the Jets this year yet? Uh, well, Carol well, said the Jets are going to win 12 games. I think, I, they're, I, I think they're going to win 12 games this year. If, if you put the numbers together, what, what worries me is the first three games of the season because they're playing three so games. The ten. over and under is at 10, right? Right, right. Okay. I have them going on, on the over. but Well, the, you will. Of course, you're a Jets fan. I mean, but, no, but I'm, I'm just, I'm honest. I'm an honest Jet fan. I'm okay. an honest Jet fan. So I'm not going to sit here and beat around. If Aaron Rodgers stays healthy this year, they're going to win over 10 games. But here's the problem. This is what scares me is their first three games. They got it in San Francisco on Monday Night Football. Then they have Sunday, Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock in Tennessee. And then they got to play New England on Thursday Night Football. That's three games in 10 days. That's That's brutal. When Hold on, forward. the first game is what, when? Monday Night Football. Monday night, and then Sunday and then Thursday. Sunday and Thursday, yes. Ooh, that's brutal. That's brutal. Monday yeah. and Thursday, that's all, oh, short weeks. It's brutal. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's the yeah. to kind yeah. of like iffy. If they yeah. go two and one, they, they could go three and oh. Now, a, a lot of people thought, Hey, you know, Aaron Rodgers is not good in San Francisco, but maybe with this team, this is the best team Aaron Rodgers has ever played with. This is the best defense he's ever played where, with. Where did this – Where who pulled that stat? Where did that stat come from? What are you talking about as far it's as talent? The best team Aaron Rodgers has ever played with. The defense, is, the, the defense is rated in the top five this year. That, that's oh. Oh. They're, they're rated in the top five. Aaron Rodgers has never had a top five defense in his whole career. And he's he's won a Super Bowl when they were top seven defense. Right. So, so this is the best defense he's ever had. No, now, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold, hold on. I, I just got to slow you down, okay? All right. Here we That's go. a preseason ranking versus a postseason ranking. You, you can't – let's not get – they're they're supposed to be top five. We don't know if they're gonna right. the, the injuries do hurt them, yeah, absolutely. And we don't even know if Hassan Reddick is gonna play. I like the Jets defense. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying, as far as the roster is concerned, this is the most talented roster he's ever played with. Now that doesn't mean anything. I understand Offensively, that. Offensive weapons, I don't know. Mike Williams. You have Garrett Wilson. You have Brees Hall, who everybody thinks is going to be a top three running back in the league. I mean, Braylon Allen looks pretty damn good, too, in the preseason. It looks like he's running over people. I, I mean, they're tight ends. I mean, they have a tremendous amount of depth at the tight end position. No, 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 no. Wide receiver-wise, this is definitely not the most talented wide receiver corps. Well, who was that? Oh, give, me, give me the most talented wide receiving core that he had. It, it was Cobbs in him in, in Green Bay. Cobbs? No, I mean, it's Randall not- Cobb? Are you no, kidding no, no, me? No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear me out. It's not that they were over talented; they were experienced, right? And they were. They, he had a solid receipt. Even L- Lazard was over there, right? Lazard's yeah. not the same Lazard he was in Green Bay, right? Well, because Aaron Rodgers didn't play last year. That's why. I mean, come on. Who was throwing him the ball? Oh, I'm sorry. The same guy that just got married paid his 1.5 million to his uh, his his future wife and doesn't have an NFL career anymore. In Zach Wilson. That, so Daryl got to go. watch him. And he was at the preseason game. Yeah, he got that, to watch that had a great game uh, Sunday. Okay. Stop. He's probably, he's, he's, he might be available. You guys. Stop might- it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Don't try to he sell played, me Zach played, Wilson. He played really late into that game, though. Oh, did he ever? He plays late in every single game. He also gets lost in every single game, too. <laughs> he, looked, he looked solid against the you know second and third stringers or fourth stringers or whoever he was throwing against. And then, by the way, and 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 Keith, you keep saying Devontae Adams. Yeah, Devontae Adams on paper right now. But Garrett Wilson 
we we seen what Garrett Wilson could do with nothing throwing him the ball. Let's see what Garrett Wilson can do when he has a quarterback competent throwing him the ball. You're right. You, you know what? You just proved my point. Devontae Adams and Cobb, right there. You you don't you don't have a receiving core that's better than that. Well, well hold on one second. Mike Williams is you know when healthy is a good wide receiver, and 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 you have. Uh, Garrett Wilson, who did back to back years, Garrett Wilson is Garrett Wilson. I will, I will give Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is he's the guy. I, there's no doubt about that. Garrett Wilson, Devontae Adams, they cancel each other out. So now we're going say. to the next guys, right? Okay. And and Aaron Rodgers always had a tight end, whether it was Mercedes yeah, uh, uh, Conklin. Conklin's a pretty good tight end. <laughs> Whether um, in Green Bay, he always had a great, uh, a good tight end. Let, let me not say great. Good, right? but, uh, Count Quinn's a good tight end. Yeah, okay. nobody's throwing the ball. He's getting five, six hundred yards every single single season. He's he's a good he's a good tight end. Yeah, I'm not saying he's not. I'm not I'm saying, saying he's not. I'm just saying I'm canceling out here. I'm trying to help you here. And, and and but the the other wide receivers in Green Bay at that time mm -hmm. had had been there, so it they had a chance to gel, right? And and that's part of it too. Like you like you're saying with Garrett Wilson, with Lazard, with Conklin, they they've only been together for what one season, one yeah. off, two off seasons now, right? Two off seasons because yeah. Aaron got hurt. We don't know, but it, I, I'm told I'm, I'm just Brees speaking. Hall though. Brees Hall is he's a beast. He's arguably maybe the best back he's been with. Yes, arguably. Arguably, yeah, this guy Allen is just pretty good too, man. I mean, I was watching this guy; he was running people over in this preseason game. The best back I think he, Aaron Rodgers played with before that was like over, rookie year Eddie Lacy, and then he got <laughs> before he started getting having weight issues. I mean, <laughs> I, Aaron and this offensive line. I mean, on paper, with the ta young talent that they have, and some of the youth, and, and some of the veterans that they have, if they can stay healthy, if they can stay, this could be a really good offensive line too. So, okay. Yeah, all right, all right. Oh, he so had solid offensive lines in 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 Green Bay. That yeah. also helped. Yeah, so but, we'll but see. We'll maybe see. Maybe this will end up being the most talented team. We'll yeah, see. we'll see. We'll see. We don't know. We have to stay healthy because the Jets are always known not to stay healthy. I know all about it. Every first, ah. I remember him running out on the field. Uh, you know, on, what was it? Sunday night football. Sunday night football. Mo Monday night football. Was it Monday or Monday, Monday, Monday night football? Running out like Captain America with the American flag, lights, lights out, lights, camera action, and in four plays, his career or his season was over. Yeah, one, was one, of my, one of my good friends is a really big Jets fan, and he was, you know, he was. You know. He wanted to throw up. I wanted to throw up. I was watching the game. I, I wanted to throw up. I was like, oh, here we go. I mean, I, I think, I think no, nobody, you know. Even non Jets fan, they want to see Aaron Rodgers and want to see him in New York. And stop, yeah, God, everybody hates the Jets. They're all like, "Oh, this is very jet like." Here well, we go. <laughs> well, it was jet like, but we're, we're we're not rooting for the Jets. We're rooting for Aaron. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, the national media doesn't want to drag him down, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather take a dump than feel what I've dealt with over the years as a Jet fan, man. I just. Uh, a number two, reading a newspaper and then sitting there and watching a football game. I, I mean, honestly, for years, sitting here and within five games, the season was over. Okay. And that, and that's that's the problem. You you just don't know what you're getting. And the Jets brought in Tyrod Taylor as a I think he's one of the most competent backup quarterbacks in the NFL. So mm -hmm. I think the Jets have really put themselves in a position that if they lose Aaron Rodgers for some freakish accident. They have a competent guy if he stays healthy because he hurt his ribs last year with the Giants yeah. Yeah. Uh, where the, the Jets could still have competent quarterback play. But as everybody knows, we are talking to former Colts and Broncos defensive end, Daryl Reed. So I want to go back to what we were saying with, uh, with Russell Wilson. We were talking about him before leaving the Broncos, going to the Steelers now. And there was a bunch of uh, complaints last week uh, with Stephen A. Smith and guys like that uh, taking shots at Russell Wilson. So what you saw with the Broncos the last two years and now going to the Steelers, is he really like that hated across the NFL? Or do you think he's, uh, he's getting unfairly attacked? I think he's getting unfairly attacked, honestly, because has has he changed? Is, is Russell Wilson – Russell Wilson is – always been Russell Wilson. It's yeah. not like he's changed. He's like carrying himself differently. He's the same guy he's always been. I think, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's not at the top of his career anymore, but it's the same Russell Wilson. 
maybe we're getting to know him better and people don't like him because now they know like they maybe don't like his personality or something, but his personality didn't change. He's the same Russell Wilson. I mean, I think it's unfair though. I think it's unfair and um, you know, the situation in Denver obviously didn't work out where, you know, the, the coach player relationship wasn't the best and and he wasn't sure Peyton's guy. And I, I think he's actually going he's got a lot to prove. He's proven he's a, a, a good quarterback. He's played at the highest level. He's Super Bowl champion. Um so I think with Tomlin, I think I think he's got a chance to have a, a really good year. And, you know, it's not going to be a lot of pressure on him to me. They're going to run the ball. They're going to play good defense. It's the Steelers. They haven't changed in 30 years. Yeah. You know what? You know what's crazy about this? And I, I, I've been taking shots at Russell Wilson over and over again. But I, I look back, and if you remember what Peyton Manning, you know, years and years ago when he hurt his neck and he the whole steroid scandal mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. everybody forgot about that because it's Peyton Manning. Uh, it was brushed under the rug. Peyton Manning came back. He was healthy. Did all those great things with the Broncos. Went to a Super Bowl. Lost against Russell Wilson, if you remember, in New York. Of course. And uh, had one of the greatest seasons he's ever had. But people forget. Now, everybody loves uh, Peyton Manning. Everybody forgot what he did or the steroid situation and, and everything like that because it's Peyton Manning. But because Russell Wilson isn't Peyton Manning, he's not beloved like Peyton Manning is, and he's not from the Manning brand. Everybody's throwing Russell Wilson to the woods, and I, I, I and then that to me, and I went. What I mean by the woods is that you know they're you know what what's what's in the woods, all different animals, including wolves, and everybody's biting on him and eating him up, and he doesn't know what to say, so he's hiding. And and you haven't heard Russell Wilson say anything from all the stuff that you're he's hearing. Doing the right thing, he's doing. Yes. Yes, he is. He yes. is. I will say that. Let, He's not saying anything. Play, do the talking. He comes out firing week one, week two. They they win two, three in a row. Nobody's going to be talking that what they're talking now. You know, but they're in a tough division too. Boy, are they ever. I think it's yeah. the best, best division in football. It's not even that's not even an argument. Yeah. Look at yeah. the defense in that. You have Baltimore, you have the Browns, that was the best defense in the league. You have Joe Burrow and the Bengals in that division. I mean, that's the best division in football. Tough division. You, really oh, tough. tough. It's tough. I think three teams are going to come out of that division to make the playoffs. I, I really do. It's just so good. So it, it, that can that. Yeah, I mean, I think two are already in Baltimore and 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 the Bengals are like automatic locks, right? When's the last time both teams missed the playoffs? Right. Um, and then it's out of the Browns and Steelers. I mean, I think that's very possible. So. You know, before we let you go, because I know you're a busy guy, and we we got to get together, man. We we do. We have to get together. Maybe you come out here. Maybe we'll go out where, there. Where are you at? On the island, or where are you at? We live on Long Island, man. I was I was I was just out on Long Island at Ohika Castle. <laughs> you were at Ohika Castle. What were you doing? Doing I, doing it was, it was a charity event. I did a charity event at, at Ohika Castle. You should have told us, Daryl. I mean, come well, on. You're right. You're right. That's that's my. You should have told us, but I'm, I'm listen. Probably- Probably do it next year. It's you know. It's, it's we're not going to wait until next year. Stop <laughs> with this. Stop with this next year crap. Okay. You're going to buy our old Denver so we can watch Zach Wilson. I'm actually on Long Island all the time. On, uh, well, you, you you're North. following you're following Speedy on Twitter, but you're not following me. What, what what's up with that? I, I don't know. I gotta I gotta get my uh, my people to fix fix everything up. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's, come on, Daryl. I mean, you're, you're I know you're like a six two six three guy, and Are you a North Shore guy or South Shore guy. I'm a North Shore guy. Okay. All right. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> he knows guys. He knows the difference. I do, I do know guys. I'm I'm actually a DJ. So when you come out here, we you know we can have some fun. You know? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, and I I DJ all different kinds of events and and many different things. But uh, listen, wait, maybe we come out to Denver and uh, we'll go to a game with you or something like that. Yeah. Be- the Jets play the Broncos. You know that, right? Yeah. They- here in New York. Yeah, I'll be there. All right, so let, let's do it. Let's get. Let's I, get. It. I live in Jersey. I'm just visiting Denver right now. What the hell is wrong with you, Daryl? What the? You live in Jersey. What do you? you a, a, <laughs> Jersey's not far from us. My friends in Jersey. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. So, the Jets, Broncos. <laughs> are you Jesus. going to the game? No, but like, let's go to the game together. What do you mean, Zach Wilson Bowl? <laughs> you're going to the game or not? Where are you going to the game? I'll go to the game. Let's go to the game together. I yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm proposing here. All right, let's go to the game together. 
All right, let's do it. Yeah, let's I, go. Think, I think Bo Nix is going to get the best of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> I was just hoping that Elijah Vera Tucker doesn't get hurt. <laughs> That's what I, I I am hoping, but it, it's on our field. But again, it's the worst that doesn't field. matter. It's the worst field in the NFL. Everybody says so. Hey, uh, it doesn't uh, hold well for us. Oh, Met Life, they say. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They say that that the MetLife Stadium's uh, turf is the worst in all of football. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it that bad? I don't know. Maybe it's different from when I played there. That was a long yes, time. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, it was a long time. Because that was giant. That was giant stadium. <laughs> That was the Fort John Mara ruined. That it. was the Meadowlands. That was the Meadowlands. That's right. <laughs> you played before John Mara and Woody Johnson Darryl, ruined it for more. You're old as dirt. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Manning, the Manning Bull. Hey, Lanza, listen. You're the Manning Bull, and I'm the man, the myth, the le- the legend. <laughs> so, so did we that. Oh, Donald Driver, I forgot. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, you wanted to hear about the stat. Yeah, you, you were. Um, so, Fish, uh, thank you to Fish in the comment section. J.C. Horn was the latest drafted defensive player three years ago, number eight. And there was nobody else in the merger era since 1970. Wow. That, no draft had it in the top ten where nobody was taken. Wow. That's crazy. There you wow. have it. Not, not, none. Never happened in the merger era. <laughs> that is crazy. That is a crazy thing, man. Oh, you That's got the stat. You can run with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. You can run with it. You no, could run with it. Your thing. This is your thing. You know. Oh. I'm, what about I'm just a guess. I'm just a guess. <laughs> You're just here to rile them up with the Jets. Yeah, you're hanging out. You're hanging out in an apartment. What, what are we doing right now? Is yeah, that- I, like I said, Airbnb. It's nice though. Like I got a balcony. You know. It's it's you. A nice with your woman, right? With your woman? Yes. 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 Yeah, she's probably sitting there saying, "What." What kind of show are you on? These guys are nuts. Oh, so I'm on this like all fruit diet. Like I'm on this like real like health kick. Like I'm going like 120 days all fruit, like 80% fruit, 20% vegetables. So like we go to the grocery store like every other day. Oh God. Fruit or whatever. So that's where I was coming from. I'm like, give me five minutes. I'm like coming back from the grocery store. My brother did one of those things. I think you call it an elimination diet or something. There was like so many specific things that couldn't be in it. Like you couldn't eat. It was the weirdest thing. You're a carnivore. How are you eating fruit, not meat? Now, you listen, I, we don't have time for that today. <laughs> but, but true, all true carnivores in, in nature all eat their, their meat raw. We don't eat raw meat. Hmm. Because raw is where the actual nutrients are, the blood and all that. That's a, that's where the. But that's that's for a whole like. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So what we got? Paleontology with Daryl Reed is what the dinosaurs ate. We got to get together. We got to get together for this football game. Let's. We don't have balls. We got to create all these tools and. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Speedy's gonna get a hold of you. We're gonna go to the Jets and Broncos game this year with you, and we're gonna have some fun. Whether or not Aaron. Yeah. He's healthy. That's fine. That's fine. Let's do it. I'm I'm all for it. Let's do it. Daryl Reed, ladies and gentlemen, funny as hell as always, and he's on a all fruit and vegetables diet for 120 some odd days. So look at him. He's gonna be angry. He's gonna be an angry man at MetLife no, Stadium. I'm not, you know what? And I have. Let me just say this. I have one of the biggest sweet tooths that you totally. would find, right? But I, like I'm, I I've been like it's like I'm on day, I'm only on day two though. Don't get me wrong. I'm gonna do- <laughs> I might, I might reach out day ten. Like guys, I'm freaking dying here. <laughs> you're sneaking, you're sneaking oh, out a popsicle stick in the closet. <laughs> Where are you, Daryl? Oh, baby, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> but you know, it, it it's been good. I, you know, the fruit's been ha- hold me over on the sweet tooth, so it's good. Fruit of your lines, man. <laughs> We love you, man. We'll, yes. we'll be in touch, buddy. Yes, we'll yes. Say hello to the family, buddy. For sure, for sure. Great, great, great to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Um, look forward to a great season. Football season is back. Mm-hmm. Best sport um, in the world. You got to come out here and see us do a live shows. We're going to be at Miller's Ale House. We're going to be doing a couple of live shows this year. You Miller's Ale House in, on, on the island? On the island. There's mm-hmm. a Miller's Ale House in Jersey. Near All my- over it, yeah. Okay. All right. I was just making sure you weren't going to be near the crib. I was about to say. Well, we might, we might do that. We. we All right. It's okay. It's okay. Well, I'm going to come up, come out to Miller's. Is that where you guys do the game from, or whatever? We're going to be doing a live show. We're going to be doing some pregame shows. We're going to be doing the first game of the season, September 5th, here in Long Island. Uh, it will be at six o'clock. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. 
Yeah, we got to do. I mean, that's going to be a great game, though. Actually, oh, it is, and it'll be a lot, a big crowd there. It'll be a big crowd. We'll be, uh, you know, making people laugh and acting like complete idiots and fools. You know? For sure, you guys, you guys doing give giveaways and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Who did that in the back? That was That's our executive producer. That's fish. Oh, yeah. that was that, that was oh I'm, I'm eating somebody. Who am I eating? In that's Speedy's head. Oh, that's Speedy's head. <laughs> the T Rex eating Speedy. Wow, Speedy. Oh man, I, I've been decapitated by a combination of a T Rex and probably whatever else is in that tray. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't have glasses back then because they didn't exist. <laughs> Right, yeah, that's that is true. Speed, great. He, does, point. he he looks like Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which they didn't have glasses either, so that's also geographically and uh, historically inaccurate. Uh, he kind of looks like Moses. Moses <laughs> didn't have glasses. We got We got to get. We got to get the year glasses were invented. Well, not even invented because we got to see like. When they found fossils with glasses in them. Look at this. Look fossils. at this. Yeah. That would be <laughs> that would be the investigation of the of the millennium, really. Are we didn't even get a chance to talk about that? Well, Hassan uh, Reddick. Reddick debacle. Uh, we will have to we'll have to do that in person, man. Gosh, I mean you might not be playing by week five. Don't you feel like you guys need them? I I think with the Jets and, and what, what Johnson, Jermaine Johnson looks really, really good. He put on a lot of weight. Uh, I think he looks really, really good. I, I've heard through, uh, you know, all the training and all the stuff that he's done in the offseason. I think he's going to be ready. I think he's going to take that next step. So I, I don't know if they need Hassan Reddick, but it would be nice to have him. I mean, who wouldn't want Hassan Reddick on that on that defensive line? That, that makes the defensive line even more dangerous. So we could use him, but. I, I think the Jets have already come out and said that, uh, you know, Hassan's going to be a Jet this year, and if he wants to sit out, let him sit out. Uh, they're going to they're going to make this, you know, a move where Joe Douglas is standing, and 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 he, somebody's got to bite. It's you know not going to be. You know what? You know who's to blame for this, right? You got to blame Joe Douglas. Tory Dandy. Tory Dandy. Tory Dandy, Reddick's agent, has to be the blame. Yeah. How was where was the miscommunication? Mm -hmm. That happened that Hassan thought he was going to get paid when he went to the Jets and the Jets thought he was going to play. Where's the miscommunication? It's the agent. You know what? Daryl Reed, you heard it from him. Daryl Reed knows his agent. It's all because of him. Let's cut his head off. Got to be. It's got to be. You'll and lead him. We'll, we'll put we'll put him. We'll put his head in in the T-Rex's mouth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Do that. <laughs> I want to see how Hassan Reddick play on the Jets defense. So do I. Yeah, wouldn't all Jets fans do? Yeah, I think but everybody they, does, but I don't know if that's going to happen. They don't want to pay him to do it. Well, hey, yeah, listen, who does? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, if the Jets let him go, he's go he's going to get paid. Oh, he's getting paid. Oh, there's no so, question. So he deserves to get paid. Yeah. Oh, no question. No he, question. It's just a miscommunication that happened. That uh, that's already supposed to be worked out mm. before any trade happens. So I I just don't get that. It's got to be the agent. It's got to. Mm -hmm. Well, one more thing for you to see right there. there it is. <laughs> Passion of the speedster. Yeah, that's <laughs> with the uh, with the uh, Robert Sala Bambi. Well, that's what I call him now. I call <laughs> Robert Sala Bambi. <laughs> you must pay for them. <laughs> I call Robert Sala Bambi. That's a, that's why he's he's got his head on Bambi's body. Okay. <laughs> You know, if you ever seen the movie Bambi, you know he doesn't say much. He's the, uh, you know, he's, he's passionate head coach of the NFL, according to him. No question, no he, passion whatsoever. You said no what? No passion whatsoever. And that oh well, 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 yeah, well, we know that. We we no know passion. we know we know he's. I mean, I think that's why his players love him. Mm. He's, he's, no, no, and I said he has no passion. No. Yeah, but no, you're joking. I mean, yeah. it's the opposite is true, right? So yeah, it's, yeah. You know, I think that's I, I, his players play for him because of his passion, you know. So, you know, when he was uh, the defensive coordinator for San Francisco, a lot of passion. When he's over here with the Jets, he's a, he's he, you you get more passion of him wiping his ass than he is on the side. Oh, you're serious. You you really oh, he has no, no, passion. Passion. no passion, no passion whatsoever. He sits there with his hand, his hand, his head between his legs. Man, we have pictures of his head being, you know, shoved in in the grind of his, you know, crotch. More times than I've ever seen, you know, as Listen, a you, you would be the same way if your 
starting quarterback, franchise quarterback. You got- shouldn't have drafted him. You're the one who thought he was great. Get the hell out of here, Daryl. That I'm guy. About Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's he's had some bad luck. Listen to the situations he's been in. Mm. And he's made the best of them. Plus, okay, let's let's just be. You want to be his be, agent? You could be his agent. No, let, no, let's just, let's be serious, right? Okay. Head coaches cannot exude the same passion or energy or excitement as a coordinator during the game. Mm. They have to be more like melatonin, like more monotone, like more relaxed, like been there before, you know. That's tell, that to, tell that to Dable. His face is red. He's screaming at everybody. It looks like he, he looks like T Rex when he's out there. Who are you talking about? The Giants head coach? Of course. Well, I, I mean, let, okay. So number number one, I think I think he's been a head coach a shorter amount of time. Mm-hmm. One year. For, one year. Two years. Two years. No, one year from Salah. No, no, I'm ta- we're talking about Dable. Yeah, he was only he was hired the year after Salah. It's two years. He's been the head coach for the Giants for two years. And how long has Salah been the head coach for the Giants? Three years. Three years. All right. So Salah's got one year on him. Um, and and his personality is a little bit more explosive. You know, he's got more of that Rex. A little more. I mean, he's got he's, more of that Rex Ryan to him. You dude, know he ran out of, dude, he ran out his defensive coordinator. He ran out his his what his offensive coordinator. He ran out everybody. Everyone's just like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this team. I'll go. I'll go become a defensive coordinator in college. I don't want to deal with this shit. I got he got rid of the old line coach stuff. <laughs> that was long overdue. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Dable. Yeah. Oh, you're saying they can't deal with his personality? No, obviously can't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's. I mean, if he's like that on the field, imagine him in the meetings, right? No, I would love it. If he's yelling at me, I'd be sitting there and be like, "What are you laughing for that?" And I'd be like, oh, I'm, not, uh, "I'm sorry, coach." I felt like Robert uh, uh, Coach Salah was a was very passionate when he first started as a head coach for the Jets. Am I wrong? No, I think he, he, he was right. No, I don't think he was. I think he changed ever since he came to the Jets. He he's become a yes man. When he was over there as a defensive coordinator, you loved his passion, you loved his credibility over there with the San Francisco 49ers. He came over here and he's a yes man. You know, I, you, know what? You, you know what? I know what happened. Uh oh, here we go. When the Giants got cable, that's when it changed for you because he's more passionate than Salah. That's what happened. That, so now you're comparing one to the other when you should be giving Robinson his own bucket of passion. I, I got one passion for him. That's why I call him Bambi, okay, because that's what he is. He I is bet, I bet Robert name, Bambi Sala. <laughs> and I bet that name didn't come until the Giants got their head coach. No, it, it's been coming, man. It's been coming. I just, it, during the show, I was like, you know what? I love Disney movies. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of Bambi. Yeah, everybody's like, do you remember Bambi? The bad, you know, his mother dies, and then he's he's trying to find his way. That's that's what Robert Sala is. He's never gonna become a man. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna find the the like the passionate Jets clips of Robert Sala and send them to you. <laughs> well, good luck on that. I hope you I hope you find some of them because there's a no, lot they're, of they're, de- they're definitely from his. I, I definitely know his first year. I remember I remember a play in my mind where he's like running down the sideline, yelling at the ref. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what the Jets Yeah, yeah. he was running after the ref saying, I want a sausage. Get me a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably Rex Ryan, except he couldn't run as fast. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's Robert Sala for me. <laughs> Daryl, we love you, man. Yes, we yes. Work. We're going to be in th- touch. Yes, thanks for having me. Um, we're doing the Jets Broncos game. Absolutely, Zach sure. Wilson. Bowl. Miller Miller Earl House. We'll do that. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. Bring a woman, man. I'd love to meet your woman. Yes, I, I'd love to meet yes. Your woman. If you come, Daryl, I'll, I'll make sure that they they know about the uh, the the fruitarian diet. <laughs> yeah, you, um, you know, depending, on, we might be past 120 days. I doubt it, but um, yeah, yeah I doubt it too. I, I don't think you're going to be sticking on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to. I'm going to do look it. What do you mean? He's giving you I'm a gonna look. Do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> this is already. This is already done. It's already done. What are you talking? About? Uh, hey, fish. Uh-oh. You were supposed to put. You were supposed to put a San Reddick's agent as the as the next head into the T Rex mouth. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. So, so yeah, we'll talk. We'll catch up. Absolutely. And, uh, Thank looking you. forward to it. Uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Interruption. You're not interrupting. Pa us. Pardon the interruption. Well, that was that. I didn't like that show, and I still don't. <laughs> Anyways, Daryl, we love you. All right, you guys take care. <laughs> I love Daryl. He's great. Oh yeah, he's great personality. He's he's got a great personality. I, I do want to get into this on the NFL Network. Former linebacker Monte Teo says that the 49ers are too emotionally drained to be. Uh, to be the NFC West champion this season. He mentioned the holdout situation with Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk and the loss of Eric Armstead on the defense as being big factors. Stephen A. Smith also believes that the 49ers Super Bowl window is closing because they've uh, made four NFC championships and two Super Bowls without winning anything. He added that he has doubts about Brock Purdy without Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers training Ayuk would also close the window. Trent Williams said he is still going to be holding out of practices and games without a new contract. The NFL NFL Network's uh, Mike Garofalo uh, says that he expects Ayuk's holdout to extend into the regular season as well if he doesn't get paid. The 49ers have the second highest Super Bowl odds only behind the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, let, let, let's get into this. First of all, and I love you, Manti. Why is Manti Teo telling us anything? <laughs> I mean, he should be, uh, you know, holding out on, you know, women that actually exist. I'm just kidding, Manti. <laughs> right there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I think there's a lot of things to argue about with what Manti said and, and and where Stephen A. Smith is going with this. I don't think the window is closing for the 49ers. I don't. George Kittle's still there. Debo Samuel is still there. They brought in another wide receiver that is pretty damn good. Uh, Brock Purdy just needs to be competent. This defense is still elite. They still have Nick Bosa there. I, their secondary is very good. I mean, for anybody to sit here and say that the window is closing, it's ridiculous. As long as Kyle Shanahan is there, and I'm not a Kyle Shanahan fan, but as long as Kyle Shanahan is there and John Lynch is there, this organization is going to be amongst the NFC's elite. So for them to come out and say that the window is closing, that's ridiculous. That's one. Number two, when you speak about the fact that Brandon Ayuk and Trent Williams are not getting, getting what they want, First of all, Trent Williams signed a contract a couple of years ago. He was one of the highest paid tackles in all of the NFL. Now that there's other tackles getting more money than he is, he's emotional and he feels because he's 38 years old, he deserves more. I think Trent Williams is Trent Williams because he's his personality is raw and he's going to go out there and he's going to say or do whatever he wants. And I, I still believe Trent Williams without a contract will show up one way or another this season. There's no way he's going to sit out and he's going to decide, hey, you know what, I'm not playing this year if I don't get an extension. I believe Trent Williams is going to break the barrier before Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is either going to get traded in the first three weeks of the season or they're going to sign him. Now, I still think the 49ers are going to find a way to negotiate a deal where they're going to be able to sign him. But if they don't, he's going to be gone. I could see him going to Pittsburgh. That's a team that's still after him. I could see the Patriots. If 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 Drake May is is as gifted as I believe he could be, and he shows the first two weeks that he can get the ball down the field and everything, why wouldn't Brandon Ayuk be a good fit over there with Drake May? So there's a lot to, to think about when you when you speak about the fact that when you're looking at where they are last year and what they are this year, they're different. Eric Armstead was a big defensive lineman. He's, he's a great part of their defense last year. He was getting old. I mean, how old is Eric Armstead? He, he's got to be about 29, 30 years old. He's, he's going to be at the tail end, maybe two years left at an elite level. They have done this many, many times. And the 49ers have found pieces to fill in in those sectors of their defense, and they haven't missed a beat. This is still... In elite defense, if I'll be very surprised if they're not a top five, top six defense in the NFL, they're going to be. So for anybody to think that this window is closing, it's ridiculous. As far as Mike Garofalo saying that Ayuk is going to hold out, he is going to hold. He's going to hold out as long as he possibly can. 
And I think that the 49ers are going to have to make a decision. If they want him, they're going to have to pay him. If they don't, they're going to have to move him and get as much as they possibly can back for him. I thought that the best time to move them was during the preseason because there are a lot of teams looking for a number one guy. And Brandon Ayuk would have been the best option to, to move because you probably would have got a second and a third or maybe even if a team's reaching a first for Brandon Ayuk. And to, to, to wait this long, if they do move him early in the season because they can't sign him, you're not going to get as much back for him because you know those teams are going to know you can't sign him. And his 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 worth for what he is and what he, type of player he is is going to go down because they're trying to move him and trying to get rid of him. So I just think that right now the 49ers put themselves in a really bad situation. That doesn't mean their window is closing. I, I think it's emotionally drained. Why are they emotionally drained? What makes them emotionally drained? Because they lost against the, the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? How many teams have lost against Patrick Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes has already won three Super Bowls. He's won three of them. Well, how drained are you going to be? This guy is one of the greatest quarterbacks already, ever. To sit here and say that it makes them drained? No, it doesn't. They lost against the one team that could beat them. I, does that gonna, if anything, that's going to give them more emotion to go out there and put up better numbers and put up the numbers that they believe they could put up all season long and go out there and try to play Kansas City in the Super Bowl to knock them off. I think that gives them more drive. The fact that they lost against Kansas City to two Super Bowls, back-to-back -back Super Bowls, not back-to-back -back year out year, but you know what? Yeah. Both times that they've they've met Kansas City, they've lost against them. And by very little, very little margins. I, I think that the 49ers believe that they're better than the, the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, their quarterback is not better than arguably the greatest quarterback in the league right now. But all around defense, I think the 49ers are better. Uh, the weapons that the 49ers have are much better mm -hmm. than the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, it's just a quarterback play. And maybe the coaching. Andy Reid is a better coach than Kyle Shannon. But it took Andy Reid a long time to get where he is today. Remember on the Eagles, he could never get over the hump. He couldn't beat Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. Can never get over the hump. Now, he has Patrick Mahomes. It's a different ball game. It's a different game. So, again, you, you know, you, you have to look at, you know, how long it took him to get over that hump. And now Andy Reid can't lose. He can't lose. He's always winning. I mean, he's eating a lot of hamburgers and enjoying himself at Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger King with all the commercials. And hopefully he doesn't have a heart attack. But uh, all in all, I mean, Andy Reid – I, there's nothing but winning with Andy Reid now in the last, what, seven, eight years. Yeah. Quickly, before we get our guest on, too, the parallels are very similar with Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan because Kyle Shanahan has the late game fourth quarter uh, question marks, and Andy Reid had that same kind of thing when trailing, kind of in reverse, when he couldn't manage the Kyle's clock. Kyle's got to eat some more hamper. When he couldn't trail, he was mismanaging the clock when they were trailing and being too conservative at certain points, and Andy Reid had that same kind of problem in Philadelphia and even early on in his Kansas City career when he had Alex Smith. Now, Patrick Mahomes, obviously, is a talented quarterback that can alleviate all that. The Chiefs are coming back from all these double-digit deficits two different things but with the 49ers case there's still plenty of time for them to learn and that's why they have to make sure that they can keep these guys happy to keep this window open because Brandon Ayuk I've mentioned many times I would not trade if I if I were the 49ers because they don't have another receiver that's as polished when it comes to a well-rounded skill set that same way Ricky Pierce saw more like Debo Samuel than he is like Ayuk a good defense has been able to take that out at certain points and Brandon Ayuk is such a precise route runner and deep threat to make that work. And same kind of thing you mentioned with Trent Williams a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You lose Trent Williams on that offensive line, they are like Done. below average. Yeah. They are uh, like bottom 10 probably in the league. So but he's going to have to understand. Trent Williams is going to have to understand he's under contract. And I think he will understand one way or another. He's not going to want to miss out, you know, a certain amount of games this season uh -huh. because as an offensive lineman, you need the reps. And if you're going to just walk right on the field, it, it's in term for in injuries. Mm -hmm. And, and with him at 38 years old, all it takes is one bad injury and his career is over. So right. I think Trent needs to understand that you're in a position right now that how many years do you have left? Uh -huh. You're still making a lot of money. You're not making amongst the, the top three, top four off, offensive linemen are making now. But the game has changed. There's more money being endorsed through you know television deals and, and CBA deals. So it's not... It's not the NFL's fault. It's not the 49ers' fault. 
that you took the contract that you took two years ago. Yeah. So. And I think going uh, going back to Williams too, I think you look at the way that the NFL tackles and the way that restructuring the contracts now, I think there's so much creativity where they can make that kind of thing work. Even if it like, he doesn't get the money this year, just get the guarantees down the road to make that work. As far as Iuke, I think the best option for them now is to pay him. But if they do have to trade him, we were talking about the Browns rumors and the Steelers a couple of weeks ago, get some players that can help you now this year too. get some offensive linemen from Cleveland. They have enough guys to make it work. Grab Jerry Judy or Elijah Moore in the deal too, or the Steelers grab their rookie receiver. Grab the hell you want Elijah Moore. <laughs> if you think it fits the scheme, maybe I make don't it want work. Elijah Moore. I'm not saying you should, but like you, you could get a package deal rather than trying to get the draft picks to make it work. Because otherwise, yeah, it's going to be very hard to replace that kind of thing this year. I, I remember, and before we get our guests, I remember when Brown came out and, and uh, you know on the Eagles, and he came out and said when he was there with Elijah Moore when the Jets drafted him in the second round. Oh, he's a better wide receiver than me. This guy's going to be a beast in the NFL. Yeah, he's a beast, all right. He's a beast when his anti-Semitic views and his his thoughts off the field. And when he's on the field, he disappears off the face of the earth. So I, 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 I was so happy. Elijah Moore was no longer a New York jet. So, and I, I'm sure the Browns are going to be very happy when they can move him if they can. But anyways, when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, he's been very busy as he's been blowing up all over social media. And, uh, you know, a lot of people love him. You know, he is a Red Sox and Boston Celtic fan. I, I'm kind of a little lost with that. Uh, we will be talking to the SCORE NBA Data Science Manager, Seth Anchorage Man Part Now. This is the Sports Loud Now. 631-672-3108 is the number to call. No Jeff. Very surprising. I haven't heard from Jeff in a long, long time. Very long time. I, I did wish him a happy birthday. He was drunk in, in his own little world <laughs> over the weekend. But... Uh, Happy birthday to Jeff. I didn't really get a chance to do that. Uh, go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Check out all our shows throughout the week, including the Loud Mouth with me and Speedy Petey, every single Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. All you have to do to tune in and check out our local listings for all our shows is go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Before we get Mr. Anchorage Man in, go to Bovada, ladies and gentlemen, on our link. Hit our QR code 100%. On your first deposit, that means if you you invest a hundred dollars, you get two hundred. Two hundred, you get four hundred. Four hundred, get eight hundred. Eight hundred, you get sixteen hundred. You go on and on. If you have a million, you get two million. I don't know if you're going to throw you know a million dollars down on betting, but hey, there's uh you know there's guys like Jake Paul or you know one of those idiots. Uh, they might do that. All you have to do, and and by the way, you can bet on almost anything. Uh, like the presidential election, <laughs> that, that's a debacle. Uh, you can withdraw from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litcoin. The only one, as far as apps are concerned, for betting that you can bet and use your Bitcoin. Uh, no limitations on what state except here in the tri-state. They do not, and we cannot use Bovada here in the tri-state, New Jersey, Long Island, and Connecticut. But everywhere else, practically, you can use it. All you have to do is hit our link, and you can get the deal. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're anybody or any fan out there is a StubHub fan or a Fanatic fan, you can go on our, our page and, and buy whatever you want on Fanatic, 25% off if you use our link. And if you go to StubHub, probably I think it's I think it's 10 or 15% off of any tickets that you get uh, when it comes to sports games, concerts, anything, hit our link. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Uh, he's been busy. He's been hanging out. As we all know, Snug the Cat is in love. Uh, we're now talking to the score NBA data science manager, Seth Anchorage Man, part now. <laughs> Mr. Seth, what's up, buddy? Uh, how are you doing? Uh, you, you always accuse me of being a Celtics fan. We've been through this. I grew up a Celtics fan. I know. As, as you know, you work in sports. Your fandom yes. can yes. Uh, yes, it disappears. Yeah. yeah. Someone. It's ba basically I like my my fandom of of basically all American sports is is gone. The only thing I'm I'm still a fan of is is soccer teams. Oh yeah, who's your favorite soccer team? Uh, I don't want to say. That's uh, Manchester United. <laughs> Manchester United. So it sucks. Everything sucks. Everything's terrible. We're awful. Yeah, my uncle's a Man United fan. So. Yeah. Is it, uh, uh, my my condolences to him. Isn't Lyle a Manchester yes, United fan? Oh man, so you you and Lyle would be good friends. I mean, he's. He goes, he goes to England to go to live games. He actually goes there and deals with the craziness over there. So I've, I've been, I've been to old Trafford uh, many times. Mm. 
that's it. That's probably interesting. Just being around the fans and the craziness. Oh man, it's it is uh, the the soccer experience over there is just a very different fan experience. Like you don't realize what a big deal no commercial breaks are <laughs> until you go there and it's like, wow, that was fast. Let's get a drink and then come back and do it again and then we're done. <laughs> Game's over. Where's yeah. the next game? Oh man, I, I like soccer games. I they're they're fun to go to, especially over there in England. I've never been to an English. You know, English Premier game or any of yeah. that magnitude, but I, I know. Uh, don't eat the big. food. That's all I can say. Don't not eat the food in the stadium. Well, that's what it's, I heard. The food's yeah. not really good. But you know, let's get into some NBA action. And and the New York Knicks uh, made a pretty big move, adding Mikel Bridges. Uh, Julius Randle did not get an extension. I think the Knicks are looking to move him at the trade deadline. It seems that's the route they're going. Uh, what were your thoughts of bringing in Mikel Bridges? Do you think that the Knicks now are the team? Besides the Celtics to beat in the East, uh, it's them in Philly. Uh, we we do have to see what it looks like in Philly. I think the the two. I, I was thinking about this earlier today, and of the contending teams, not a whole lot really added a lot of impact players, except for Mikael Bridges and Paul George. Those are the, the the two teams that we're probably looking out for most, aside from the teams that were looking to see some sort of internal development from, like we're year two Wemby or where the Thunder or Timberwolves kind of go from here. But yeah, no, I thought I, I've, I've been a huge fan of Mikhail Bridges for a long time. One of the stranger bits of sort of, of uh, social media hoo-ha this summer in the NBA has been mm. Nets fans taking a victory lap over how much they o- the Knicks overpaid for Bridges. Like, oh, that's like, is that really what we're cheering for now? We saw in in Brooklyn that that he's he's not a one option. But he is among the the very short list of best, most elite role players in the game. And the Knicks now have two of those, I think, in him and OG Ananobi. Um, Size is a question mark for them. I think losing Isaiah Hartenstein is going to be huge for them. And and, uh, I would not be surprised if the move they're looking to make all season is to bring in someone to solidify that center position. I think... Hartenstein emerged last year as just a, a flat out better player than Mitchell Robinson. And that's on top of uh, Mitch's uh, struggles to stay healthy. So that's, I think the biggest question mark for the Knicks. I think that, you know, the, the, the toughness and perimeter defense they have with all the Villanova guys and Ananobi and Deuce McBride are going to make this a very exciting team to watch. Uh, it's a question of, can they get through the season healthy and then add that one or two big men they need to really be a challenging force in the postseason. So Julius Randle has been in the rumor, the rumors of get, will he get the extension? Will he not? And there, he's eligible for three years, one Oh nine. Like, how do you think the Knicks should handle the situation, giving him the extension? Should they wait on that kind of thing? See how he fits and the fit with him and Mikhail Bridges. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I, I kind of think we saw in the playoffs last year where Randall uh, uh, was absent that, the style of play was, I think, more playoff ready uh, with with Randall not involved. Now they were they were a body or three short by the end of that run, but I think that the the sort of the small ball with a bunch of tough guards um, just worked better than the ISO heavy. Uh, and and Randall's been someone who, in his playoff career, has been someone who's been schemable in in a postseason setting. I think he's someone who's an excellent regular season innings eater, but I just, you, you do wonder if he's someone who can be relied on as a first or second option uh, for, to get where the Knicks want to go. And the Knicks legitimately have championship aspirations. I don't think they, they're a favorite by any means, but they, they have the proverbial chip in a chair. But the big question is, all right, our, our number two guy is, is of a player type and of a, of a, of a, of a player history that isn't, always conducive to doing great in the playoffs and is uh, to, to, you know, continue on that is not a great matchup against either Philly or Boston. I think both of whom would, would be able to uh, have the big wings to guard him, but then he's got to chase around a Jalen Brown or a Paul George or whoever. And I don't think that uh, I don't think that's a, that's a positive matchup for the Knicks in a playoff setting. It is very interesting, and, and and again, when you look at the Eastern Conference, and I like what the Cavaliers are, and I think uh, bringing in Kenny Atkinson, that could change everything for them. I think he's a competent coach that very very much helps the guard play, and maybe it helps uh, Darius play a little bit better with, uh, you know, obviously uh, the, the, the spider 
a lot of questions right now in the Eastern Conference. We'll see what happens. And right now, on paper, you, you can argue it's Philadelphia, the Knicks, and the Celtics. But who knows? I mean, Milwaukee, you know, maybe a second year uh, with, uh, you know, Dame uh, playing with uh, Giannis is, is better. I, I don't know if they have enough depth. But the Eastern Conference is wide open. I, I think we do have to say the Bucks did, despite not having a ton of of tools to work with. They did a nice job adding some complimentary pieces uh, sort of around to just increase the depth a little bit. And then the biggest thing for Milwaukee is, and living here in Milwaukee, kind of, we, we got to preview this even before preseason started. It was the, the disaster of the coaching situation last year was something that was uh, developed early and just kept on developing. And so just have it coming in with some solidity and a plan to start the season with Lillard and, and Giannis, they almost get a mulligan for their, I don't think they, they really meshed fully at any point last year, just going in with that, with a plan and a coach that is going to command respect. Um, I think that they, they, they are written off at your peril. Uh, they're certainly coming to the end of their run. But I think you, I think we would be remiss to just uh, think of last year and 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 just dismiss them completely. I don't like Doc Rivers. Uh, that's just my I, my. I you know I'm not a big I like his his playoff foibles are well documented. But you know the first the first thing to do when you find yourself in a deep hole is to you know dig run, out run from him run yeah. from him. That's what you no, do. No, no, no. No, but it's it's it, the the improvement from where they from where they were from a coaching standpoint right. last year is is gargantuan so even if doc is not the best coach they were let's put it this way they fired the coach at 30 and 13 and everyone was like that's about right kevin garnett had some interesting comments about Giannis. he said he was the fourth best player in the eastern conference he said joel and b jason tatum were definitively above him he didn't list his third one specifically but what are your thoughts to that i mean i don't at a certain point it's time to stop listening to ex-players just because they're ex-players i don't know there, the, you, we get all, enough social media of of, uh, of of guys just saying stuff. Um, I think that that Embiid and Giannis is at least a discussion. I still pretty definitively go Giannis for now. Uh, Tatum is a, is you know I've gotten in trouble all summer for saying this, but Tatum is 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 a half step below that level of player. You know the the, the top five six guys in the league are. I think we know who they are, and 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 Jay and Tatum is just outside of that. Still, um, I think he, you know, the he was good in the playoffs. I think the degree to which he struggled during parts of the playoffs was overblown. He was good, but part of the reason why Boston's the best team is they needed him to be good. They didn't need him to be great to win a title, and I think that says as much about the rest of the Celtics as it you know it does about him. But you know the Nuggets aren't winning a title unless Jokic is great. The 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 Knicks. I mean, sorry, the the Sixers aren't winning without without Embiid being great, and so on and so forth. So I think that you know we, the Tatum is is just outside that group, and I don't want to bring the Olympics into that. But their guys played over him, and it 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 didn't not make sense, as even though there was a lot of outrage Back about it, Back which is. <laughs> nonsense like we're it's not a it's not an it's 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 not a a, a boys and girls club trying to win a, 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 a an olympic medal here and and you know you have 12 all-stars in the team someone's not going to play and devin booker is not as good a player as jason tatum but he certainly seemed a lot more willing to accept a role that's very different from his you know star role with the suns oh you need me to chase guys around a defense and go stand in the corner yeah i'll do that and I, I, it's not entirely clear that Adam really wanted to operate that way. So if you're the coaching staff, I, I think it's a very defensible decision. You could certainly build a Team USA with that roster featuring Tatum. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to happen on Steph and KD and, and LeBron's last go around. Anyway, that's that we, we are talking about the Olympics. I don't know why I want, why I brought that up. <laughs> we are it was yeah, just I you know I haven't I haven't done a ton of uh I haven't oh. done a ton of uh, radio or pods since the Olympics happened, so I'm still annoyed by it. Well, oh, don't worry. We are talking to the score NBA data science manager Seth Anchorage part now. You know, uh speaking of the Olympics, there Jalen Brown was not very happy about a lot of things that happened at the Olympics, and white being picked over him was something that really 
set him <laughs> set him off. And then he went after LeBron's kid. Uh, he's been going after everybody in, in so many short ranges of craziness. And, and now all of a sudden you're going into a new NBA season. He might, him and White might not be, you know, okay with certain things that he said before the Olympics. And even the Jason Tatum thing, he even threw Jason Tatum onto the bus. He said, listen, who is the MVP of the finals? I was. Why is Jason Tatum on this team? I should be on the team. So there's a lot to hear, you know, well, and now everybody's going to Don't wear see. Adidas. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jalen Brown is, you know, he's not wrong on a lot of things that he said, yeah. but what's going to go on in that locker room when this team yeah, is I not think, I, I, 